this is chemistry lecture from chapter seven. This is the second chapter seven video. There will be three total. And in the book, we're on page 215. So you want to take a second to uh, open up to that point. In your notes, we're on page two, and we're starting at this equation. Frequency is equal to speed of light over the wavelength. All right, so C stands for the speed of light, and light moves really fast. So it's three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Uh, lambda, I think I can, in the last video I called this gamma, but this is lambda stands for wavelength, and that's going to be in meters. Okay, and then frequency is how many times a wave passes a given point in a second. So for light, it's going to be uh, really a lot. The unit for frequency is hertz. All right, so you can think of that as cycles per second if you want. Now, if you'll look at your book on page 215, you will see the visible spectrum. So. Uh, light that emanates from the sun, uh, human eyes can only see a really small portion of that. We can see from 400 to 700 nanometers. Okay, so you'll be using this chart to answer some of your homework questions. Uh, 400 nanometers, the shortest wavelength, that's the highest energy. Uh, red has the longest wavelength and the lowest energy. Okay, so again, human eye can see between 400 and 700 nanometers, but light uh, consists of a much larger spectrum than that. Okay, so let's talk about nanometers for just a second. Nano means 10 to the minus nine, right? That's how small uh, light is. So to convert meters to nanometers, this is at the bottom of your notes, you're going to divide by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. And then to convert from nanometers to meters, we multiply by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. All right, that might be confusing at first, but I think once we start working some problems, you'll, you'll get used to it. Okay, at the top of the next page of your notes, you may have learned this in a middle school science class or even elementary, the acronym Roy G. Biv. So that's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Okay, so at the red end of the spectrum, you have the longest wavelength, the least energy, the lowest frequency. On the violet end of the, spe of the uh, spectrum, shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy, and the higher the frequency. And you'll see how that works mathematically in just a minute. All right, open your book to page 219, and let's do a couple of on-your-own problems. All right, 7.4 says, what color is light that has a frequency of 6.4 times 10 to the 14th hertz? All right, frequency is 6.4 times 10 to the 14 hertz. All right, so frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. In order to get the color, our chart reads in wavelength. So let's solve for wavelength. And what you do is just switch those two. You might remember that from density is mass over volume. Frequency is speed of light over wavelength. So it's similar algebra. You would have the speed of light over the frequency. So our wavelength is going to be 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by the frequency 6.4 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, so if you plug that into your calculator, you get 4.69 times 10 to the 14th 
times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now, if you look, voice just cracked, that's pitiful. If you look at the chart, we have to change that into nanometers, okay? Well, the way that you uh, change that to nanometers is you divide by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, and you'll get 469 nanometers. And you might notice it's just, if this is 4.67, 10 to the minus 7, just move the decimal point to the right two spots and get rid of the 10 times 10 to the minus 7, and that tells you how many nanometers. All right, so that is the uh, wavelength. So let's look on the chart. What color is 469? Well, 469 is, you know, right in here somewhere. I put that in the blue range. Okay, so let's do uh, 7.5. I think I have enough room to put that down here. So it says, if red light has wavelengths from 7 times 10 to the second nanometers to 6.5 times 10 to the second nanometers, what is the frequency range for red light? Well, first of all, we need to change it from nanometers to meters. Okay, so uh, you would have 7 times 10 to the second nanometers. When you want to change that to meters, you're going to, uh, excuse me, nanometers. You're going to, to get that into meters, you multiply by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, and that's going to be 7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. All right, and then for the, the other one, 6.5 times 10 to the second nanometers. Multiply that by 1 times 10 to the minus 9. And that's going to be 6.5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So we need to get, get our, um, since the speed of light is in meters per second, we have to get our wavelength in meters. Okay, so the frequency range. Frequency, let's call this the first one. Frequency 1 is the speed of light over the wavelength, so that's 3 times 10 to the 8th and we're going to divide by 7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Alright, and that is going to be 4.29 times 10 to the 14th Hertz. Our second frequency, again, speed of light over wavelength, 3 times 10 to the 8th. And then that'd be over 6.5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. All right, our second frequency. So you put that in your calculator, you get 4.62. times 10 to the 14th hertz. So that's our frequency range from 4.29 times 10 to the 14th to 4.62 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, uh, so pause the video if you need to and we will move on. All right, uh, we are at the relationship between frequency and energy. So the equation that you're going to be using there is E is equal to HF. Energy is equal to Planck's constant. You can pronounce it Planck's constant if you want, but I, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it's Planck, Max Planck, all right? It's a science guy, famous science guy. So this is energy, and that uh, energy is going to be in joules. Uh, Planck's constant is something that you'll always be given. Uh, it's 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, okay? But you don't have to memorize that. And then frequency, of course, is in hertz. Now, something to remember, and if you know the equation, then this is pretty easy to 
figure out as frequency increases, energy is increases. So if you increase frequency, since H stays the same, energy has to increase. If wavelength increases, so wavelength is uh, going to be, if frequency is big, wavelength is going to end up being small. So if wavelength uh, increases, then the energy would decrease. A bigger wavelength means less energy. All right, so let's uh, work out a couple of problems there. So 7.6. So we are on page uh, 223. It says, if a light wave has an energy of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 14 joules, what is its frequency? All right, well, if E is equal to HF, then solving for F, that's going to be E over H. So that'll be 3.4 times 10 to the minus 14 joules. And H is in the problem 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules per hertz. All right, and uh, put that in your calculator and, and you should get 5.13 times 10 to the 19 Hertz. All right, right underneath that, and on the next page in your notes, is 7.7. .7. So that one says, if visible light has energy of 3.3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, what color is it? All right, so if to get color, we must get wavelength. All right, if we can get that, we can get the color. Okay, so if, uh, if we can get the frequency, then we can get the wavelength. So E is equal to HF. So F is equal to E over H. All right, the energy 3.3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And then 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 is H. So our frequency uh, ends up being 4.9 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Now that's not what it asked for. 10 to the 14th. All right, what it asked for was the color. Well, to get the color, we know that frequency is the speed of light over the wavelength, so wavelength is going to be the speed of light over frequency. So you would take 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second and divide that by that number, all right? The frequency that you found, 4.9 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, and when you do that, you will get uh, 6.03 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now, if you divide that by 1 times 10 to the minus 9, that'll give you 603 nanometers. But see how it's just 6.03, move this over to the right. So we've got to go back to our chart on page 215, find 603. To me, 603 right there, it looks like it's in the yellow range. All right, so yellow. Okay, one more little thing, and that will end this lecture. Pause if you're still writing. That is the Bohr model of the atom. So Niels Bohr, uh, I'm going to 
link some videos about this in the description box that I want you to watch. So videos in description box. Okay, that'll t talk about the Bohr model of the atom, all right? But uh, the experiment that Bohr did, so before, before Bohr you had uh, Rutherford's planetary model, and Bohr's model is also a planetary model. So Rutherford discovered the nucleus, but what Bohr figured out was with studies with hydrogen is that electrons orbit the nucleus in, dis in distinct energy levels. And they can only be in an energy level. They can't be anywhere in between. So it's like they teleport from one energy level. So you've got space uh, to draw this on your notes. They teleport from one energy level to another. So let's, let's say you have an electron in energy level two. If you add energy to that electron, okay, if you add energy, then it will jump or teleport, it doesn't go anywhere in between, to an outer energy level. But, however, an electron wants to be in the lowest energy level possible, okay? So it wants to come back to that energy level too. So the way that it comes back is it emits light. So it releases that energy to get back to what we call its ground state. That's the most stable situation for an electron is to be in its ground state. So if you add energy and it jumps out an energy level, it will get back to its ground state by emitting light. Okay, so that's how it releases that energy so it can get back to its ground state, all right? So again, I'm gonna link some videos that talk about that. Please watch that and read the text about the Bohr model of the atom. So that will do it for this lecture. The homework uh, that's involved in uh, this lecture, so the homework, uh, we're on uh, page Excuse me for just a second while I flip over. So we are on page uh, 245. So the review questions that you can do um, are, I believe, uh, we stopped at number seven before. So you can do eight, you can do all of them. You can do eight through 12. And then you can do on page 246, the practice problems. This will be on Microsoft Teams on the assignment, but you can do four through six. So again, this is on MS Teams. And uh, you can submit it through the assignment on that page. All right, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next video.